Hello everyone, I'm George from Ireland and here I am by the grave of John Keats in uh, Il Cimiterio a Cattolica at Rome, the non-Catholic cemetery or the Protestant cemetery as it's sometimes known. So I shan't recount the whole of um, Keats's biography but uh, he died in Rome at the age of 25 um, and uh, in one letter he wrote to a friend I think I shall be remembered amongst the English poets after my death. It seemed a very vain aspiration at that age, but it, it's one which came true. And so um, he always feared he would be forgotten, that his work wouldn't count for much, that it was widely appreciated uh, even in his lifetime. Um, and uh, so uh, I shall read you the following inscription. It's got the lyre above, as in the ancient Greek musical instrument, because he wrote lyrical poetry as though it were to be, to be recited to the lyre as in um, it would be, would be turned into songs, lie as in L-Y-R-E. This grave contains all that was mortal of a young English poet who on his deathbed and in the bitterness of his heart at the malicious power of his enemies desired these words to be engraven on his tombstone. Here lies one whose name is writ in water. February the 24th. 1821. So, writ in water, how long was that going to last? So, he, he feared that it would be washed away. Or is it because he thought his, it would somehow be miraculous being written in water? And uh, his uh, literary apotheosis owes much to his friend Joseph Seven here, who was slightly younger than him um, and was here with him in Rome when he died and um, helped to really. Mm, evangelized for the cause of John Keats after his death, became the British consul at Rome and lived on till 1879. And there's Arthur Seven behind there. I'm not sure if that's his son or whatever. So um, anyway, just so much to say about John Keats and how I wish I could have met him. And this is the close that I'm ever, the close I'm ever going to get to think that he just lies six feet beneath, beneath my feet. Whatever remains of his, his skeleton is something. Here I am touching his tombstone as I can somehow connect with him. I so wish I could have met him, what I would say to him, what, what would he be like in person, to know him better, someone whose poetry I've appreciated already most of my life, and I've already lived much longer than he has, you know, I vainly wish I could achieve a fraction of what he did, so um, he was um, an absolutely marvellous poet, I think, probably never wrote a poor poem um, throughout his life, um, so he died of tuberculosis close to um, Piazza di Spagna, uh, at the foot of the Spanish steppes. So this um, horrific disease, um, coughing up blood. Um, I can't remember, consumption they often used to call it in those times. So um, I'm not sure Percy Bysshe Shelley was at the, at the uh, funeral, but Shelley himself died um, a year and a half later in July 1822. I shall now go and see um, Shelley's tomb, well, well, where his um, uh, ashes are interred. So, uh, so memorials to Keats. You'll notice it doesn't actually say his name, a young English poet, so you had to know as though his name could be forgotten. Did he want it to be forgotten? But obviously his, his name echoes down the ages. His work shall be appreciated by uh, the millennia. So, uh, and, and then someone composed a, a poem in his honor. Keats, if thy cherished name be written water, each drop has fallen for some, from some mourner's cheek, a sacred tribute such as heroes seek. Though oft in vain for dazzling deeds of slaughter, sleep on, not honoured less for an epitaph so meek. Or um, um, Keats um, himself wrote the words, I in the very temple of delight, veiled melancholy has her sovereign shrine. Um, so uh, there's another line of his, I can't remember which, uh, which poem it comes from saying, O oh, soft embalmer of the midnight still. Um, or what, was, what, what else did he write about? Um, um, uh, to, oh, to cease upon a midnight without pain. Perhaps, I'm not sure if it was in the throes of uh, his, his death struggle when he thought of that, and um, he suffered a ghastly death apparently, and Joseph Seven recorded some of his last words, and that finally, as life gradually ebbed away, he faded almost imperceptibly, he might have simply been slumbering. Well, that is enough about John Keats. I wish I could come back here and recite some of his poetry, perhaps I shall, and maybe be here on the, on the bicentenary of, of his death, or when was his internment two or three days later. That's enough from John Keats.